Hi everybody, Rochelle here from Quebec Cyclidé. Today I'm going to show you how I ship out my fish at my local fish store. Because I have a feeling that, well, for the next couple of weeks I'm going to be doing this a lot and maybe some of you at home or your local fish stores will want to see this. So, stay tuned! First of all, I fished out all the fish and put them in buckets with their water. I put a bit of a shipping product. I bought this years ago. I'll try and put an affiliate link in the comment section of either this product, if it still exists, or a similar one. I put some in all my fish, except for those that have um, softer scales, such as ancestrus, uh, plecos, or even loaches, or fish like that. These are African cichlids, so they're technically not sensitive to this product. Uh, sometimes they are, and they might arrive asleep at the client's house. It has happened. Uh, usually with fresh water, when you're acclimating them, they will wake back up. This is very rare, but at least they're not stressing out for the whole transportation. So now they're all chilling out. While I prepare the fish, I'm also preparing the heat packs, which are just being activated, and I want to make sure that they're functional, because once in a while we get one that doesn't work, and it can really screw up a whole shipment. So we make sure that they all work. <laughs> to make sure that the heat packs are ready before setting them in the box, we use a heat gun, and we check that they are activated. If they're room temp, they didn't activate, and if they are not room temp, they were activated. I use uni heat, 72 hour heat packs, and the 30 hour heat packs as well. Just in case, you know, it's happened that even in winter time there would be a delay for two days, at least we have the 72 hour heat packs to save the fish. And this winter shipping has been going great. For this client, I have four species of fish. These are two inch embunas. They will be all separated in separate bags for shipping. So as you notice, Ben's also fishing out other fish for another shipment because I have a couple shipments going out today. But let's get started with this one, which is these four bags right here. I mean, buckets, whatever. So I try to put the fish in the biggest bag I have available that I can fit them in. So fish plastic bags, I, as, much, as much as I wish I could use the biodegradable ones, don't use the biodegradable ones, they degrade in water. What I put is a piece of plastic. It's like a hiding spot for the fish. Um, it's basically just a garbage bag that I cut up in pieces. All right. Some people do this differently. I stock them standing up, so in the box. So cut the air and replace the air that was in there with pure oxygen from my oxygen tank. Made a weird sound. All right, and that's enough for the fish. Actually, this is more than enough for the fish. All right, so I twirl it around like this, make a little knot. Some people just knot it up regularly. I use elastics just like that. I put some tape at the bottom of the bag to make sure that uh, the fish don't get squished in the corners.
So we use packing paper or we, are reuse, we reuse plastic uh, packaging that our suppliers send us to pad the box. Now the fish are in the bag, in the styrofoam box. Let's prepare the cardboard box now. For the cardboard box, I like to add an, one layer of insulation of uh, just regular shipping paper, just as an extra precaution. You can't be too careful. So now let's set up the uh, heat packs. For the heat packs, the 72 hour heat packs are stuck on the top of the box and we put the 30 hours in on the sides. Now that we set up the heat packs, let's shut the box off, seal it off with tape, and we're gonna put it in the cardboard box. Seal that up and we're ready to go. All right, so we're done. Both boxes are packed and have been shipped out. A couple of closing notes on winter shipping. So you have to make sure that the temperature is right. Don't ship out if it's minus 20. Some people do, I'd rather not. Uh, there's always a day in the week that it's safer. I like to ship in the beginning of the week because if ever there are delays, you're not stuck with the weekend. I rarely ship, especially in the winter, on Thursday for Friday reception because if something gets screwed up, well then it's the whole weekend that you have to wait and then the fish are done for. Also, a little note on water quantities and oxygen. I, I said earlier, I like to use the biggest bag possible. Um, I like to use the biggest bag possible and I fill usually half and half water air. The more water you have, the safer it is because the temperature fluctuates less, but don't sacrifice oxygen for water because if there's no oxygen in the top part of the bag, well, then you're done for. If you're a client and you're receiving a box, if it's being shipped to your home, you have to be vigilant. Because sometimes the delivery people, depending on where you are, they sometimes will just plop the, bo the box in front of you. There is no company that is better than others. They all have people like this. You know, not everyone has the same work ethic. So in the winter months though, what we do at our store, we do not ship uh, door to door. We ship to the closest ship center of the company that we use. This way, when the box arrives at the ship center, usually in the middle of the night, so let's say I'm shipping on Wednesday, today is Wednesday, uh, that I'm filming this, and it'll arrive on Thursday, like in the small hours of the morning. And at 8.30 a.m., usually when they open, they will call my clients and they'll go pick it up. So they barely spend 24 hours in the bag. Of course, when you ship like I just did, they're okay for another 24 hours. Unless, of course, they're left out in the cold. It, in that case, you don't really have any control over that. But it's happened often that there was a delay of one day and it was safe. For people for whom I can only ship with two-day shipping, I only do that in the summer because they're fine for two days in the box, but at least at night, since it's warm, you're fine. And we don't use heat packs unless the nights are still cool, like let's say it's 15 Celsius, we're still gonna put a heat pack in, but just not as much as we would in the winter. We are now in my office. In this video, I have run into an insane amount of technical difficulties. First of all, my phone didn't film when I was uh, packing the fish, which is the essential part of this video. Thank goodness I had two shipments going out. And finally, for my closing words, well, the sound didn't. Saved. So this video might be oddly done, but hell, the information is still there. So here are a couple of closing thoughts about uh, shipping fish. The day before the shipment, and obviously the day of the shipment, I make my fish fast. So I don't feed them for those days. The less they eat, the less they have to evacuate. They won't be evacuating the food in the water, keeping the water clearer longer. So obviously all the all the techniques and all the tips I've talked about are not for everyday travel. If you're just taking your fish from the fish store, it's normal that they don't pack it up like that. Even I don't pack it up like this for everyday traveling. This is really for overnight to two day ship. You've probably seen different people have different kinds of ways of packing fish. They are, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying mine are better. We just have different ways. Some people rather put the uh, bags horizontally or I like to put them vertically. There's no right or wrong way. Because of the whole extraordinary world situation now with the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been shipping out fish a lot more because people would rather have their fish shipped to them rather than, uh, well, come in store. We also offer this great uh, takeout service where you give us our order and then we bring it to your car once it's ready. Exactly like in the clip you just saw. As for all of you who are not from around my store, 
I would like to encourage you to encourage your local fish stores. So if ever you have, uh, if ever you're worried about your food supply for your fish, buy it from them rather than big companies because I can assure you that at the moment, everyone is freaking out. All the business owners, especially the small business owners because we don't get these awesome huge bailouts like some do. So everyone is really stressing out. Just to know that you're encouraging them, that'll already help them out a lot just to get through this. And if you encourage them now, well, they'll probably still be there when all of this is over. So shop local, don't just do that to your local fish store. Do that to all the local businesses that you can. It's great and they all are very, you know, these are actual humans you're talking to. So everyone's really open about this. They, they understand what's going on and they will take all the precautions necessary. We're all figuring out how to manage our business from by distancing ourselves from our clients physically, but not emotionally. All right, so that's it for today. Have you ever shipped out fish or have had fish shipped to you? Try and say that quickly five times, good luck. So has that ever happened? If so, I read about it in the comments if anything stood out or you wanna add anything to this video. I love reading your comments. A special shout out to Catfish Cave who gave me the idea to actually go through with this video. So thank you for your inspiration. I always listen and take your request into consideration. If I haven't made the video yet of all the requests I've had, it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of um, wanting to. If I say I'm interested, I'm definitely interested. There are actually many that people have requested that are written in my computer, but that I just haven't filmed yet. I might have a lot of free time soon, so look forward to that, I guess. If you like this video and you want more, subscribe to the channel to make sure not to miss a single one. This channel's coming close to 15,000 subscribers. That is so exciting. Well, it gives me something to be excited about in these grim days. If you want more fishy content in between my videos, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a great website where you can shop online, definitely shop online, and see all the fish I have for sale. If you want a shipment, whether it be local or car takeout or <laughs> shipping with um, a carrier, just send me an email with your uh, full address, with your postal code, and I will see your shipping options. If you want this fabulous Cichlid Geek t-shirt, it's available in the Teespring store. Every shirt you get encourages me to continue doing what I'm doing and hopefully, <laughs> in these grim times, helping me pay my rent. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who supports me on my channel in my Teespring store, in my actual physical store, or, well, shipped out <laughs> these days. I'm in Tarbonne, Quebec. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.